Ladies and gentlemen, the warmest of welcomes. It was an overcast start to the day here in Prague, but thankfully the sun has appeared in great timing because it is the ladies kayak final that will kick off the very first World Cup of 2021. We're live here from the Prague Whitewater Center on this mighty fearsome river Vltava. It is the Czech National River and it is the first World Cup of 2021 and the second last major. We go to Markleberg in Germany next week in advance of the fast approaching Tokyo Olympics. I'm delighted to have alongside me Noemi Fox. Noemi was an under-23 bronze world medalist in 2018 in Avrea. Olympic reserve this time, Noemi. But we have had a very exciting semi-final. What do you think the finals hold? Um, I think this is an incredible final. It's so open. The podium is open to any one of those paddlers that are on the start list today. So I think we'll see some great paddling. It's an incredibly tricky course, a Prague classic, I'd say. And um, yeah, like I said, it's open, it's going to be challenging, and it's going to be a, a battle from start to finish for the girls. This is our timetable. The men's kayaks will come at 12.40, but the course is treacherous, 240 metres, 25 gates, six upstream gates, Naomi, the ending is fearsome. There's a section between 17 and 21 that is so late on in the course that it's testing the very best. Yeah, I do think that the, um, the ending is a, a challenge and uh, that's where we're going to see uh, a lot of the, the technical aspects of the sport come out and, um, but also these spins in the middle section and those tight staggers. So we are going to see some exciting paddling, some challenging um, stagger moves, some spins and some great skills on display on this Prague course. And it is the Rio Olympic champion, Miley Schoeho, who will kick us off, followed by the 2019 World Junior Champion, Anthony Galaskova. Then the double Olympian, Natalia Pasiernik, starting at number three for Poland. Then the world number three, Ricarda Funk. But the ending, sensational. And your sister, Jessica Fox, the best of all time in the World Championship history of Canoe Slana, will come third from the end. I think um, it's actually a great start list because we have the 2016 Olympic podium. Uh, we also have some really young up and coming paddlers as well. So a very diverse field of paddlers. They all have their great strengths, different styles. And um, I'm really looking forward to see uh, how they deliver today. And we are underway. The World Cup for 2021 kicks off with Mylene Chorot. The Rio Olympic 2016 champion is the first to drop So Mylen is kicking us off and uh, quite a conservative paddler and uh, touch on gate three, so a tricky start. But as we learnt in the semis, it's not enough to um, you know, lose concentration over a small touch. Anything can happen, but when you accumulate two penalties like she just did there, it does become quite tricky. Opting for the spin and now setting up for the staggers. The back off isn't a bad option and we'll see a few girls do that today. It's quite safe. It makes sure that you stay online, but with two penalties, uh, hopefully she can keep her head in the game, but she'll know that that is quite tough to be on the podium with four extra seconds added to her time. 38 years of age, my name's Shiro. She will head to her fourth Olympics in Tokyo. She started this year in Reunion, the French island out in the Indian Ocean between Madagascar and Mauritius as her winter training base. She's a brilliant, fierce, a very small pocket rocket, as we called her in the semis. Yeah, she's quite the pocket rocket, and she executed that section very well. You could see that her boat stayed very dry, and she didn't get caught in the stoppers. And even there, she just used the water and, and pulled. You can see her biceps clenching. She really pulled on her blade, and it got her through in a very smooth way. No major time losses on the bottom section, and just um, plus four penalties at the top. So uh, I think she'll have an improved run from her semi-final. Miley Chereau coming down to the line. She won the World Cup here in 2017. She won't repeat that victory, sadly, four years later. But we have a standard set, 104-13, with the four seconds to add, gives us a guideline. Yeah, so I think 100 clean would have been a really, really competitive time for the podium today. So a bit disappointing from those two small touches that she hit with the, um, the boat, kind of just bounced and flicked the pole. Um, but you know what, it's actually a really good opening time and, and great to see that they've kind of learnt from the kayak men and learnt from their runs in between the semi-finals and the finals today. And as we've seen again, the Vlasava River has no respect whether you're an Olympic or a world champion. as the Rio Olympian. The champion from Brazil comes home with two penalties out on the 
Whitewater Courts. Now we get underway with Antoni Kaliskova is up at the start. The second for the home nation, the one for the Czech. The men are all qualified, the three to come for the men's kayak final, but only Antoni Kaliskova holding the national flag. But she is a 2019 World Junior Champion. Yeah, it's really exciting to see her. Uh, she's a young paddler. She has an incredible style, a very unique style, quite at the back, very long arms as well, so she can do some great sweep strokes. Um, but, yeah, she had a, a, a scrappy, let's say, semi-final, so I'm really excited to see what she can do in the final. Um, great athlete, also a great person. She's a pilot, I believe, on the side. Uh, she made the top 10 in the European champs here last year. She had a late mistake, sadly, at gate 18 in the Europeans, which cost her because she was ahead at the first split. Would have gone into bronze, and it's a promising start here for the home nation. Yeah, you can see it's quite a, a meticulous, well-thought-out start. Um, a little bit caught on that surf across, but very composed paddling and um, uh, way more, I guess, settled and composed than her semi-final. And she's nearly two seconds up, so this is a great start. Let's see how she can hold it together. And she catches her bow and quite a smooth entry into gate 13. And uh, now she's getting ready for this crunch section of the, the bottom half of this tricky course. Anthony Galaskova building a good head of steam here, second of the ladies' kayak final. Nearly, ah, she was two seconds to the good, but that midsection's cost her now 1.38 down on Miley Chereau. Yeah, so she's really going to need to conserve her, her pace and maybe uh, kick up a gear, not try not to get caught too much in those stoppers. Quite tight on that upstream. We'll see the results from the judges. And uh, getting a bit caught up in that um, stopper is also quite time consuming. So you can see the way Maiden did it was just using it as a, a little bit of a, a kick and then really pulling on your blade, and that's the way to, to do it. So we have a pending penalty on, on gate eight and uh, two touches on gate nine and, and 20. So this is quite costly in terms of penalty, but um, great run nevertheless from this young up and coming Czech paddler in front of her home crowd. Yes, home pressure sadly has weighed heavy on Antony Galaskova's shoulder as she comes home. Waves to the small crowd. Four seconds, though, to add at 9 and 20. Yes, I'm sure she would have loved to compete in front of um, all of her friends and family in the stands, but um, it's, uh, they're all watching with us live, so it's um, welcome to everyone. Yes, superb to have you with us for the first World Cup of 2021. The little black rims at the bottom of the gates that enable our judges to distinguish the gate from the dark water of the Vatava just behind it. If a video decision is called on. So, so far, both of the competitors that have come down have plus four penalties. Uh, we'll see what the penalties are like later on, but um, I think that the winning times will be most likely zero penalties or very, very fast. So we'll see what the, um, the rest have to show. Well, Poland, the only nation double qualified for these women's kayak finals. And the first of the polls is up at the start. Natalia Pasiepnik is powerfully away. Double Olympian London 2012 was seventh in the K1 class in London and 11th in Rio de Janeiro. Boy, a good start. Yeah, very what good a breakout start. that was. She kept the speed on the boat that whole way, and I think that was a, that was an awesome up from um, Natalia. So to start, the staggers are also very smooth, and she's just setting herself up nicely. A, a good direct surfs across well as well, and you can see that she's just so focused, and she's putting a lot of weight on the front of the bow to avoid any possible penalties. And wow, she is up on the split. Yeah, superb from Natalia Passier through the forest of gates. Uh, her father, Robert, was a Polish canoe slalom champion from Drawitska in Poland, a town with a real tradition of kayaking. Can she maintain this brilliant stance? Yeah, you can see that she's attacking it, and I think the mentality from a lot of the girls is that a lot of them probably didn't think they would have made it through to the final with the runs that they had because they were quite a few of them were a little bit scrappy and so they have nothing to lose and it's another opportunity to just you know put the work down and, and fight just a little bit awkwardly off the stopper just got on the edge of the boat there she's lost i think a fraction but recovers well yeah a bit sticky but she still came out 
well and, and same there, a bit sticky, but she can, um, you know, she's pulling really, really hard on the blade and so she's saving herself from some bad situations. And I think this is a really competitive run that she's put down. Natalia Passier, Pnik, she started the sport in 2004. She had a break in 2013 to give birth and she is back with a serious bang in 2021. She will set the pace 1.64 seconds clear of the Rio Olympic champion, and she is rightly delighted. Oh, yeah. I mean, if you deliver a run down here with zero penalties and it kind of goes to plan, then I think you have every reason to celebrate at the finish line because it is very, very challenging. And she, that upstream, well, I think a lot of the men will be observing that. And yeah, that set the, the tone, Naomi. <laughs> that turn into three, that was pinpoint precise. Yeah, you could see she used a bit of the outstream, um, um, the outer edge to really keep the, the boat speed. And yeah, awesome run from the Polish woman. So battle is on two for Poland in the ladies kayak finals. It will be Claudia Zwolinska, the quickest of the semis, the last to start at 12.32. But now we wait because the world number three is up in the start. And we... <laughs> yeah, it's a very exhausting course and uh, very physical, so they're probably all very lactic at the finish line. Yes, from the... Uh, Activities of Natalia at the finish to the world number three up in the star gates. Ricarda Funk, 29 years of age. She had her first World Cup medal here in 2012. She's won this World Cup on two occasions, 2014 and 2016. Comes from Augsburg in the deep south Ooh, of Germany. Touch on gate on the first upstream with, it, with her hand. She just punched it a little bit and um, won't stop her from delivering a full run, but... I, th I think I said in the semi-finals that she's a, a great paddler to not compound errors and to not let it distract her, but it is a costly time penalty and she'll probably want to kick it up a gear as she heads into the, the second part of the course. And very tight in that first stagger. I think we'll have to wait and see what the judge says. Yep, yeah, it's sadly, a second penalty. comes on stuck at nine with the 50 after a very acrobatic early section. She was the European champion here in 2018, one in Vienna in 2014 as well. Yeah, I think, well, Ricardo Funk will be very disappointed with that. She's uh, more of a conservative paddler, likes to take the wide lines, and that's where her speed really kind of kicks in. And so you can see that she's trying to be a little bit more conservative, especially around, um, or take more risks around the um, staggers. And as a result, it's cost her a 50 second penalty. And she's not decomposing, which is good to see. You know, she's still fighting through, but I, no, she knows that she has a, a very costly 50-second penalty. And Noemi, the women's semis was not so long ago. We don't typically think of canoe slalom as an endurance sport, but I guess the endurance now is a factor. Yeah, so in between their, their runs, they really had to um, you know, reframe, refocus, learn from the video and, and get ready for the, the finals. And it's a, a mental challenge as much as it is a physical one. So it's very hard on those girls and Ricardo will be very disappointed, but it is the first international race of the season leading into the games. And so you can only really take on the lessons in the lead up to take you. Yes, an early mistake, a big midsection mistake and a late penalty as well for Ricardo Funk. She keeps her composure, that characteristic she's well known for, but I'm afraid the German challenge falters. They have one more to come. Both Poland and Germany, apologies for that early inaccuracy, they each have two representatives. We are bang on the halfway stage of this ladies kayak final first World Cup fixture of the 2021 season. We go to Markleberg in Germany next week. And Camille Prigion, this is her favourite course in Prague. She will start next week as well. Going to Tokyo as the sole French kayaker 
Camille Prigent is on course world number nine. I'll just correct you there, Camille is not selected to Tokyo, it's um, Marie-Zélie Alafon, but she's a reserve and she's an incredible paddler, very composed and um, great grip when she paddles and she um, has had some incredible races on this course. She is well known for keeping the boat running all the time and so she can, oh no, I didn't mean to jinx her, but you could see that she just tried to flick off too early from the wave. We saw that error quite a few times in uh, the semi-finals. We um, know that it's actually better to, to go a little bit further and avoid the risk. So that's a costly, costly time error from Kenny Prigent. Well, Camille Howes from Rennes in Brittany, capital city of Brittany, up in the northwest of France. I was pretty sure of my research there, Naomi, but you would know. And <laughs> so not going to the Olympics. No, I think she's a great hope for Paris 2024, and I'm really excited to um, see what she could do there at the Home Olympics. So um, hopefully that journey goes ahead. Um, but, you know, I think she'll be kicking herself for this short penalty that she, um, well, like time penalty that she uh, had in that research. And, potentially get 10. Pending decision at 10 as she's now at this really challenging bridge quintet of gates that are ultra demanding, the sting in the tail of the World Cup course. And what she did there was uh, great and uh, something to learn from because she stayed on top of the, the stopper and didn't get caught and uh, lost no time at all but just used those waves to her advantage and uh, you can see that she's so light and so she just bounces the whole way and it's uh, a great style. Yes, power like this. to weight ratio, very good for Camille Prigent, such is her ability, and of course that allows the boat to really flow. She's going to be disappointed, and there's some pensive moments, I'm afraid, for the young French. I think kayaker. it is disappointing because, you know, when you're at that start line, you think that anything is possible, and, um, you know, you could be on the podium if you just stick to your game plan. just see this forest of gates it is fearsome the water choppy and turbulence 3.6 meters is the drop from start to finish over this world cup course for 2021 and even Camille Prigent falling foul of this brutal world cup fixture Halfway through the women's kayak final, uh, Natalia, you're currently leading. Uh, how was your run? Uh, I'm really happy. I, I'm really happy with my run. My time was, I think, it was the same, but without touches, I do my best. And I don't know what the girls are doing, so I'm, I'm happy with my run. Yes. Thank you. halfway stage and this ending is going to be fascinating and I feel first major of the year is going to set the tone for Tokyo and your sister Jess Fox the only kind of omission from a trophy cabinet is the Olympic gold so we are certainly backing Australia third last uh, drop is Jessica Fox yeah we'll have um, some People in Oceania are staying up quite late tonight watching and cheering on their um, their Olympic medal. Well, hopefully medalists, but their Olympic boats. So we'll have people in New Zealand and Australia. So shout out to all of those people watching and uh, thanks for all your support and for tuning in. And outside of the medal chance of Jess Fox, of course, 35 nations qualified for the canoe slalom for Tokyo. The sport is booming up on the 30 from both London and Rio. So it just shows the development, the rapid pace of canoe slalom developments. Yeah, definitely. We have some old names that we, we all know lined up for Tokyo, but we also have some great new ones as well. So Natalia Pasiapnik is our leader for Poland at the halfway stage. The Rio Olympic champion, Mylen Shoro, second with that very costly four second added penalty. Yeah, she'll be kicking herself for those um, small touches that she had on the upstreams. But here we have Luca Jones from New Zealand, calm, collected. So uh, very excited to see how she uh, negotiates her way down the course. Yeah, steely focus on the face of the North Islander from Tauranga, Harborside City, facing the Bay of Plenty now down in Auckland from October to May. Luca Jones is on course for New Zealand.
She will go to Tokyo in her fourth Olympics in both C1 and K1 disciplines. Very solid start uh, with a sweep into a sweep out of gate three and uh, very. You can see that she's very focused and just trying to stay on line, doing a spin. I'm not sure if that was her her plan, but a touch on gate six. We learnt from the semis as well that you can't can't be distracted by a, a small penalty at the top. Lika Jones was brought up next to the Wairoa River. She started canoeing at 10 years of age. Her favourite river is the mighty Katuna in New Zealand, as is Vic Prindices, who we'll see later in the male competition. Yeah, she, um, I mean, the Kaituna River is an incredible river and uh, it's very different to Prague, but she spent a lot of time on Prague and I think her style is very good for this course. She is so strong and, and fights from start to finish, but she also knows how to use the water really well and grunt her way through the course. So a little break there for Luca Jones as she now grits her teeth into this real sting in the tail of the World Cup course. She's got to make up a lot of ground, though. Yeah, but she negotiated that quite well, and, and you can see that she stayed on top, so that was an awesome bottom section from Luca Jones, and just sticking it out for the last three gates. Let's see what she can do, but I do think that she gained quite a bit of time down the bottom. She did that really, really well. Now just got to clench the biceps all the way to the finish line. Yes, the tall, powerful figure of Luca Jones. World number eight is crossing the line and pushes the Polish time oh. close. It's half a second precisely down puts her hands up as if to say what more could i do so great run from luca she'll just be kicking herself for those two penalties that she had and um otherwise it would have been a very 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 fast and competitive time for um i'd say a gold on this podium and natalia passi lives on she exhales in the kiss and cry region she's got four more to sit out kim woods jess fox alina apple and claudia zvolinska the battle is bubbling up very, very nicely. Yeah, I think we can see that the penalties don't stop you from being competitive, but if you are clean, it is a huge competitive advantage. Awesome run from Luca Jones, though, and now on to Kimberly Woods from Great Britain. Four more to come, 25 years of age. This, again, is her favourite course. She will certainly, I'm pretty sure, Naomi, go to Tokyo for Great Britain. I'm very excited to see what she does um, at the Olympic Games. Uh, she's an incredible paddler, very, very strong, a bit tight on gate five on that stagger, but holding the line and opting for the direct waiting a little bit she got caught with her paddle but she still handled that quite well and now into the crunch section of the top section and very smooth and controlled in those staggers so um her teammate chris bowers he said that all you have to do is just set up and then float your way down and the course will will work for you so she did that really really well and this time is recoverable hails from rugby up in the midlands united kingdom now down in chess hunt locally to Lee Valley and she's now ahead. She's caught up time in this very demanding midsection. Yeah, so she had a, a solid top section. Now we just have to see how she uh, handles the, the bottom half of the course. But she did it really well in her semi-final and she knows that she just has to do it the same and uh, keep her head in the game. Yeah, Kimberly Wood, she won this World Cup in the C1 category here in Prague in 2017. Really Could well she done. win a K1 as well? I think she's very, very hungry for the medals and she has had a very good run and it is clean so far. So uh, this is a competitive run from Kimberly Woods and exciting to see her sprint to the finish as we wait for the final time. Kimberly Woods powers to the finish line. Long paddle stroke for the Brits. There is a decision pending, but it is 1.57 seconds to the good of Natalia Pasiernik. The pole finally falls, although we must wait for yeah, 17. So there is a pending decision, so that is always a, a very nerve-wracking position to be in. But 
Uh, regardless, it was a very solid run from Kim and uh, she's very happy and, and, and excited about um, the results and how it finishes and how it feels. So uh, a penalty has been added to Kimberly Woods. Ah, there. what a shame. So that fleeting moment of first place, now she is in second 0.43 behind. Yes, the judges were suspicious. They looked at the video with attentive eagle eyes and sadly, the British bid to win the C1 and the K1 titles here in Prague Falls. So there we can confirm the decision went against Kimberly Woods, 0.43 her deficit. She goes into second, so Natalia Pasiepnik holds on, but now three more to come. The world number one, Jessica Fox is away, the most celebrated and decorated world championship canoeist. It's underway for Australia. Very powerful upstream and very powerful exit for Jess. So this is a good start from her. We'll see how she sets herself up for the staggers. Smooth, controlled, really extends her neck to squeeze into the gates and opting for the direct, but touches it with her bow. So she's going to have to really make up this time later on down the course. But it was certainly on the clock. I thought a oh, lightning start. Second penalty ah. added on gate nine for Jess. And uh, a bit late going into gate 12, but she, yeah, so see, you could see that her bow just got caught by that wave. It's uh, a bit of, bit of a roller coaster, really. Um, yeah, it just shows the demands of the course because she started beautifully, looked so composed and two early mistakes. Yeah, it's a very challenging course and she knows it's not over and she has to, to keep it together as much as she can, but uh, nearly four seconds up, well, four seconds down, sorry, this is uh, quite far from from the podium for Jess Fox. So Jess Fox now gritting her teeth in the midsection, eyes firmly on Olympic gold in Tokyo. In just a matter of weeks now, comes back to 21. Beautiful yeah, so very breakout strong, there. Very strong finish from Jess, but you can see that she's kind of struggled to, to express herself and find her groove and use the waves as she really wanted to. So she's going to be very frustrated with this run, but. She knows that it's not over and she'll give it her all into the finish line, but those two penalties will be very costly. Boah, still does enough a second. What a gritty second half from Jess Fox. Only a third of a second precisely down on Natalia Pasiapnik's time. Gritty from your sister, yeah. despite those uh, mistakes. I think uh, num number two, number three and number four right now with their penalties, they'll be quite frustrated because they know that they could have been sitting in the first position. So very tricky paddling from the ladies but it's not over until it's fully over Just two more to come in this first World Cup. Ladies' kayak final of the season. One for Germany and one for Poland. So Poland, Natalia Pesiapnik still looking very good to polls for a victory. Can Germany spoil the party? Yeah, so it's, it's really exciting to see some, some young paddlers now. And uh, the two young paddlers at the end of the semi-final. So um, we will wait and see what Eleanor can do for us, but she's a very strong paddler. As I said, in the semis, she does both, and she's very talented in both. Great style, Ricardo Funk's training partner, and I think she'll just be super excited to, to show the world what she's been um, up to and how she's been training and how she delivers in a race. Big bow rudder as she comes into four turns. Elena Apple from Augsburg in the south of Germany. She started kayaking at six years of age. Won a C1 bronze medal here in Prague, the Europeans of 2018. And her father, Thomas Apple, is the national kayak trainer for slalom canoeists. So opting for the back off and just hit gate nine in the process, but otherwise her top section has been very smooth, very controlled, and uh, her blade is always at the front. Another penalty on gate 13 that she hit upon the entry. So uh, plus four, it's not 
it's something that we've actually seen a lot of in this final, but it's, uh, like I said, it's not over until they pass the finish line because right now the podium currently standing is uh, full of penalties as well. So. Yeah, brave effort from young Ellen Apple. She enters this ultra-demanding final series of gates here on the Vlatava River. Her deficit now is uh, insurmountable with those four seconds to add at 9 and 13. She started beautifully, but like Jess Fox, problems just coming up in the middle of the course, kind of yeah, out of nowhere. The, as the fatigue hits, you can kind of uh, accumulate problems and get offline a little bit, and so it's a, a real struggle from from the middle section until the finish, but she has put up a great fight, and to see her so well ranked in the final is, um, it's a really solid effort, so. So there we are, 4.3 seconds down on Natalia Pasiepnik into sixth position goes Elena Apple, and that does mean that it is a Polish victory. Whatever happens, because Claudia Zwolinska, the quickest of the semis, will complete the ladies' kayak finals. I think it also goes to show how tough the Polish Olympic selection has been because they're both incredible paddlers and uh, it's been a, a tough fight for those two ladies and they're both very deserving of the spot. Superb to have a young finish to the ladies kayak finals because 22 years of age only Claudia Zwolinska will anchor the World Cup here at the Prague Whitewater Centre. She had a dazzling youth career. Her senior debut came in Tassen in Slovenia in 2015. She had a memorable 2016 here. This very competition, Noemi at just 17, she was fifth in this World Cup. Let's hope for fireworks for Claudia Zvolinska. Yeah, I love um, Claudia's paddling. She's so powerful and she always just, it looks like the boat is just uh, floating on top of the water and she has an extra engine that just propels it forward. So she's a very strong paddler and uh, very agile as well. Yeah, she's super smooth, swan-like to my eye. She bobs through the downstream. Offset stagger. Very, very well executed by Claudia um, in the middle of the gates, really, and no time loss and no mistake whatsoever so far. Yeah, still clean. She's going to be down on the split. One and three quarter seconds to find in the second half of the course here. So down on the split, but no major errors apart from being a bit low into that up, but um, no time consuming thoughts, I'd say. So she knows that she just has to unleash in this bottom section and stay composed and on top of the water like she has been in the top section. Claudia Zwolinska has gained time. She's caught up nearly three quarters of a second here on her colleague, Natalia Pasiepnik. So the Polish head to head is going to the wire here. Yeah, this is a very exciting fight for the, the Polish gold, who will it be? Um, but regardless, she's having a very strong, strong, strong fight. And you can see that she's just very focused and positioning her boat as she needs to and really well executed there. So it's all coming down to the last three staggers. I think she's gaining time here. Claudia Zvolinska off the big stopper to set her sailing for home. Could this be her first World Cup win? It would be very, very exciting. So she just has to power through to the finish line. So Claudia Zvolinska starting to smile. She's going to be ahead on the time. Oh. Yes. Awesome. This is so exciting to see such a young paddler who has worked very, very hard and on her way to Tokyo. I think she can't believe it. No. She's a bit confused, but um, yeah, very, very exciting. She's such a great paddler to watch. So, so happy for her. Oh, Claudia Zvolinska is blown out of the water here on the Vlatava. 1.91 seconds is her winning margin and a Polish 1-2 is established. Natalia Pasiepnik drops the second. That was a brilliant conclusion. She was so cool. <laughs> that was so awesome to watch. And congrats to Claudia. And I think for all of the girls selected to, to Tokyo, they know they have the speed. It's just the penalties. So no matter what, I think it will be a, quite a confidence-boosting race. And um, yeah, really cool to see two Polish women on the podium. I'm not sure if that's happened before. And I'm further impressed because she's young and she kept her cool. She saw some greats of the sport falling into bother. She just dismissed it from her mind, got on with her job. She stuck to her guns and I think that was 
brilliantly impressive at her tender years. Yeah, definitely. And we know that penalties, they don't mean anything when you're on the water. You just have to stay focused and stay on your, your game plan and, and see what happens and let the results speak for themselves. And, and that's what she did. So there's sight of our World Cup 2021 Prague champion. Lifts her boats up. And well done to Claudia Zvolinska. Yeah, awesome. I, I love how she was a little bit confused at the finish line. She didn't really think um, she could win, but I think it goes to show that no matter how decorated the, the, the final is and the start list is, anyone can really have their, their say and, and show what they're capable of doing. So a Polish 1-2, Claudia Zvolinska leads Natalia Pasiernik. The best kayaker of all time, Jessica Fox, finishing in third on the podium for Australia. And a Tokyo bound Kimberly Woods fourth and Luca Jones again sets sail for her fourth Olympics in Japan. Our top five here in Prague. Brilliant ladies kayak final completing. So just enjoying the moments that have framed the sport this morning. It's been drama from start to finish. Our best ladies have kept their cool remarkably well to tackle these quite extraordinary Czech waters. Congratulations, Claudia, your first uh, World Cup uh, podium, your first gold medal. How does it feel? <laughs> I feel great, really. Uh, I had a lot of uh, final, uh, senior finals, especially here in Prague, and I never been <laughs> um, enough good for the medal, you know. That's why I'm really happy. Uh, you were uh, behind uh, in the middle of the course, however, the bottom part uh, was excellent and it also brought you the medal. Yes, uh, I, heard, I hear everything, you know, when I was on the start line, I heard that Natalia was a really good run. That's why I, I heard everything and I know that I have to push, push and, and it is what it is. I'm very happy. Uh, you, you are going to the Olympics. Uh, how important is to have such a good result uh, one month uh, before Tokyo? You know, uh, you know, selection was really hard. Selection was really hard and I, it was really stressful. Now I'm easy, easy feeling and I just want to, you know, prepare to the Olympic. It's a lot of hard work, hard work and I'm tired and, and I have a gold medal. I'm really happy. <laughs> Thank you very much. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you to Noemi Fox alongside me. For myself, Ed Holloway, it's a short break here. We'll be back with the men's kayak final in just a moment. So this is the start list, ladies and gentlemen, for the men's kayak final after a dazzling display from the ladies. Michael Smolin will head off the men for the United States of America. We'll have the former world champion Peter Kautzer starting at number three. And he'll be followed by the Rio Olympic champion Joe Clark for Great Britain. The same course as for the ladies and unchanged from the men's semi-finals from this morning 
A reminder of the penalty rules. If you touch a gate with either boat, body or paddle blade, you will incur two seconds added. And if you miss a gate entirely, it will be the doom for your run. You will add 50 seconds to your total. And Mikhail Smolin will get us underway. First out of the men's kayak finals. Delighted to have Oshin Farrell from Ireland alongside me to join Mikhail Smolin first out of the men's. Welcome, yeah. Oshin. Thanks very much for having me, yeah. It's very exciting to watch Mikhail's on his Olympic selection now as well, so it's pretty cool. The ladies was demanding. We saw problems for some of the biggest guns. I mean, even Jess Fox falling into bother. So this course, as we well know, can just cause havoc from nowhere. Yeah, really tricky, even the littlest of bits. Everyone knows it plays inside out at this stage, so the littlest mistake is going to cost you a lot anywhere in this course. This course was constructed in 1980. The lead followed from the famous ice canal course in Augsburg in Germany and how to build an artificial course to this level. And it's a fascinating, one of the favourite courses of many, many kayakers. Mm -hmm, for sure. And he held on a really good run at the middle. A bit wet in the jump, but it looks all right to me. And he's 27 years of age from Krakow in Poland was his birthplace. Started internationally in 2008, his first big win the world champs in Penrith in Australia. K1 gold, that was back in 2014. Pan Americans champion in Toronto 2015 and a super start to the men's final. Really nice going ham now to the end. I'm sure he's really tired, but you've got to get them strokes in. He yeah, hammers it out to the end and it's not you know, typical to have such a long sprint section to the, to the finish line. For sure, yeah, yeah. It's a quite a long one here in Prague, and it's just that straight line. There's nothing in the way you're just going to the bottom. It's really difficult for any athlete, just for the mental mindset of it. Like. And at that point, you're sort of, your biceps are burning. You've already had all of the gates, and that is when you've got to really commit to mm -hmm. the course. Yeah, everything's dead at that stage. You're just looking at the bottom. <laughs> Well, this field is absolutely littered with talents. Mikhail Smolin gets the men's kayak final underway. First of the season. We'll be off to Markleberg in Germany for next weekend's World Cup. Then the Olympics coming in Tokyo. Then it's La Cell in Spain. The World Cup finals in September, late September in Po in the Pyrenees. And then it's the world champs in Bratislava to complete. So it's a big, big year for Canoe Smolin. Big long year, yeah, for sure. It's loads of races this year, actually. Considering all the COVID restrictions and stuff, it's really good that everyone's able to get out and do their racing. And superb that all the fixtures so far this year have been COVID free. That's been Actually, one yeah, of the big really good. credits to the organisers. Yeah, for sure. Everyone's put in a good effort. So Vavrinek, Radalek will be the next to come. It's going to be really exciting to watch. Yeah. He's an absolute powerhouse. Yeah, uh, he's gone really hard out to start already. I'm really looking forward to seeing how tight he cuts all these lines on the way down. He's been paddling here forever. Um, loads of medals here uh, over throughout the years. Like, um, so it's going to be really exciting to watch him and then Vitten, uh, Yuri coming down after him. It's going to be a very tight check race, I reckon. He was born here in Prague. His first World Cup victory was here in 2007. He was part of the team gold in Avreya's Europeans, but already in hot water yeah. at nine. It's not what you want. On again, jeez. It's not what you want to see. Still fighting though, but he's not stopped. Vavra started his canoeing in 99 at school, just for fun as a sport at school, and this is Look his climb. Yeah, it's an extraordinary story. For sure. Beautiful breakout Super tight. through 16. <laughs> Eyes up to the crowd and everything. Like he knows that the touch and the little mistake is going to cost him a lot. And he was so quick, wasn't he? Across sure, the yeah. downstream, back to 18. That was a beautiful really nice ferry line. glide. Seems like he's just enjoying himself out there now. Unfortunately, no home crowd here with the restrictions and stuff, but I'm sure all the checks are watching at home. Vavrinek has overcome asthma, problems with his lungs intrinsically, and he's got well ahead of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Still screams Big from a <laughs> tiny crowd. It's great to yeah, hear. Yeah, it's really good to hear. It's really nice you can hear all the teams shouting. Five behind, yeah. Considering his mistakes and the two touches, I mean, honestly, 
the raw time isn't too bad. <laughs> no, it's impressive again for Avronet. Gadelet completing for the home nation. He closes his eyes, grimacing at the finish. Not what he wanted, but sure. that is this course. Exactly, yeah. He knew he needed to go out there and cut everything as much as he could. And he did, and it just did not go exactly as well as Well, myself, Ed Holloway, and Oshin Farrell alongside me can't wait because this is the genius Peter Kauser for Slovenia. He's an extraordinary talent, Oshin. Yeah, man's been on top for years. He's been progressing with the sport. He's just been so fast, like it seems like forever at this stage now. It's going to be really nice to see what he does now in this run. Currently world ranked number four, Rio Olympic kayak silver, three-time Olympian Hong Kong was his debut. London followed and he bore the Slovenian flag for the opening ceremony in Rio de Janeiro. That is his celebration in his country. That's pretty cool. Spins back to the upstream gate of eight. Not Death a perfect surf in, but it looked good. Wasn't well, slow for sure. No, 0.41 is his advantage over Mikel Smolin. He's really using the flow of the yeah. downstream current, isn't he? Beautifully. It's like, almost like he's a part of the water. He's awarded, though, a two-second penalty, but I think he's still in touch. Yeah, for sure, yeah. He knows where he's going, he's on the line. It's not changing. Ah, he's lost it. I'm dead surprised because yeah. it looked very, very quick, that midsection. It did. Peter Kauser comes back from a bronze individually in the Evrea Europeans in northern Italy oh, five enjoy. weeks ago. No, it's not been a perfect run this stage. Oh, this Vltava River is proving even demanding for the greats of the sport. I'm sure, yeah. This morning. You just need to finish it out. You never know what can happen to everybody else. So you always need to get to the bottom of the run. He's getting there. Peter Kauser through the forest of gates, ducking and weaving the mighty Slovenian to the finish line. Pending decision at 17 as well. Not his run, and he just dismisses he it. it. Yeah. <laughs> Says, that's not my stuff. No, for sure. Didn't look like him as much on the water. It was clean and nice and stuff, but not the snappy kind of stuff you'd be used to. So Mikhail Smolin, the very first down for the USA, hangs on. He holds off the strong challenge of Peter Kauser. It's really good to see Mikhail doing well in this race, considering it's part of the Olympic section. Obviously, he's working really well under pressure at the minute. Yes, all of the Tokyo spots are allocated, but both Sweden and the USA mm -hmm. both now bidding here in Prague for the Olympic position. I don't know where he was supposed to push that. Didn't look to touch it, just whether he actually missed it to my eye, but mm -hmm. we await. This will be a better view. Oh, yeah, this touch, one. paddle touch on the right oh, side. Yeah, it's really good to have all these angles for the penalty confirmations. So it looks like a big crowd, small, but it's just the athletes watching. Yeah, a small <laughs> crowd of athletes yeah. gets ready because the reigning Olympic K1 kind of champion from Rio 2016, he was ahead of Peter Kauser, who won his silver in Rio, Joe Clark. Clarky getting underway for Great Britain, 28 years of age, world number two currently, is off to a powerful start. Yeah. He's a very strong man, Joe. Very nice to see what he does now. From Stoke oh, on Trent tasty. in Staffordshire, up in the north of England. It was a scout's canoe trip that got this legend launched on his paddle career. A little bit of a correction there, but he's doing all right. Well, better than all right, better than me anyway. <laughs> Joe Clark <laughs> whips back to the upstream gate at eight. Is he in touch? Yes, he's That's very in touch. Really Four nice. hundreds yeah. between Mikhail Smolin and the Olympic champion. On the back 
the hole there. It worked out well, though, for him. Joe Clark won the World Cup at home in Lee Valley in 2019. He's a five-time British champion, 2013 through to 2018, all the years, but 2017... Oh, stuck on the exit there. Yeah. But he's still ahead, and he's yeah. gaining speed here. Nice in behind, nice and safe. What? Oh, well, I couldn't see his head there. <laughs> It's through this nail section. It is so demanding, 17 through to 21. Yeah. Joseph Clark, very Super tight, tight through 21. There's a pending decision now at yeah. 16 as well. So back to back reviews it. Peter Kauser and then Joe Clark under the judges' eagle eyes. Yeah. Big long straight line after the finish. Joe Big. Clark now paddles for home. The Olympic champion crosses the line. Nice. So we won the decision, time now, but, the pendant, but yeah. one second and eight hundredths to the good yeah. of Mikael Smolin. Fist pump <laughs> for the man from Stoke on Trent. Delighted, I'm sure. Yeah, the nose of his boat just came down a little bit too early and was catching the flow on the way down. And he looked so grimace tight. to me as well, which yeah. I think indicates he knew he touched it. Yeah. So we wait. Yeah. I mean, at this stage, like, if you show it on your face, they're going to definitely penalty review. So, not awarded the penalty, mm. and Joe Clark leads the way, 1.08 seconds is his advantage. Mikhail Smolin has a little giggle, <laughs> as if uh, he thought it was a penalty, yeah. but of course it's our special decision <laughs> that is crucial. Here's Davo Laurenti. Yes, this man, Tokyo Spot, is booked with David alongside Mylène Choreau and uh, Elosogi Nuria Villarubla. Are the quartet for the Spanish. He was the individual silver medal winner, K1, the world champs in Lasso d'Orgel at home in the Catalan Mountains. Two little strokes get out there, but it's a powerful start. Yeah. It's his favourite course here in Prague. He's 24 years of age from Segovia. There's a summer camp that kicked him into his career. But he's been based at Lasso since 2012. No white water in Segovia. Tight. Oh, super tight, yeah, super tight, really nice run so far. A few little tight bits. He's doing well. Oh, unfortunately, off the back of the wave there a little bit, but he's still going. Nice so touch the, on the exit, unfortunately. Yeah, downstream gate at 12 yeah. and 13. Successive mistakes for David Lorente. His challenge was good at the halfway stage, right up on Joe Clark's time. Oh, super tight, but nice to get out. Oh, let's see if that took up any of the time that he's left at the top. Pretty safe around the back there, but got out with a good amount of speed. It's extraordinarily fine margins that are deciding mm -hmm. this World Cup here in the Czech Republic. Yeah. Right poised on a knife edge. There's David Lorente cutting towards home. Yeah, this drawn angle is really nice to be able to see how far apart the gates are. Yeah, and just see yeah. the paddle time when, as we say, the biceps are burning. Yeah. <laughs> That's good effort, yeah, four yeah. and a half seconds. We've got a pending decision at 12, the definite mm. penalty at 13, the upstream gate in the mid part of the course. Mm. And David Lorente, well, he looks pleased enough with that. Yeah. Of course, Tokyo very much looming on his horizon. Yeah, for sure, that's the main goal, that's his main focus this season. Obviously, a World Cup medal would be fantastic, but the Olympics is only once every four years. Well, five this time. <laughs>
so we are at the halfway stage precisely of the men's kayak final. Young men watching on. We have France, Slovakia, Italy, and then the last two for the Czech, the two home Czech guns boys. that Prindes and Yuri Prishkovich mm -hmm. will be the last to drop. So home hopes are very high. We'll hear from the Olympic champion. Yeah, it was good. Um, there was a few mistakes in there. Slipped on the paddle a couple of times around 13 and 16. Uh, yeah, but I was just happy to make it to the bottom um, and put a final together because it's been a while since I've done that. Do you think it will win enough for the podium? Um, I hope so. We'll see. Um, it's a tough course out there. Easy to pick up penalties. Uh, it's slightly windy out there now as well. So we'll see. Fingers crossed. Thank you very much. Halfway stage of the Men's World Cup here in Prague, and it's a fascinating end to the finals, Oishin, because some real youth talent, the likes of Jakub mm. Grigard, an extraordinary talent for Slovakia. Yeah, big And then fun. the two for the Czech are both so experienced, so a real yeah. mixture. Really mixed, yeah, yeah. It just shows, like, no matter what your age you are, like, you can be really good, uh, like, for years at this stage, really. Year he's been going since he was a junior, he's been paddling amazingly now, up to the top man in K1 men's and seniors. Um, Jakob's just come out of his own 23s now, so there's a big load of ages in here. It's really nice to see. <laughs> this is the current standings. The Olympic champion, Joe Clark, not going to Tokyo. So this is a little message again to the selectors from Joe, you feel. Mm -hmm. 92 5 four. One second the advantage over the very first to run, Mikhail Smolin. Halfway stage and Mathieu Yazitso will get us underway. 29 years of age from France. He's from Epinal, up in the northeast of France, south of Nancy, but his training base is down in the Pyrenees in Po. He started in a canoe at seven, really and that was a sharp as attack. Yeah, upstream that's what wanted to start off the race. Really lovely paddler to watch. Super nice posture and big strong strokes when he needs them. 2014 World Champs in Deep Creek in Maryland, America. Individual bronze team gold, that's his caliber. And the Rio Olympic champion is now down on the side. Point three, the French advantage. Yeah, he's looking really nice. A little bit off the back of the hole there, but he's fighting it in. Shouldn't be too much of a, of a loss, for want of a better word. But uh, he's looking good, and I'm sure he's going to keep his composure to the bottom now anyway. Matteo Biazitso flies off the stopper midway through this Latava River course it's again. Lovely up. Yeah, very deft through that upstream yeah. gates. But he's lost a little bit hole. of time here. Yeah. Let, fell off the hole there a little bit above for a second and caught in the hole there for a little bit of a second as well. It's all these little tiny bits that add up in the finals, especially here in Prague. But still, Matteo Biazitso is maintaining his composure and his balance, and he still yeah. must be competitive here with Joe Clark. The French supporters are certainly getting mm -hmm. very excited outside our yeah. commentary box. Sure, one of the biggest teams here. It's like to have their own little cheer squad whenever anybody's racing. Yeah, so strength and depth for French paddling, and Matteo Biazitso is going to come to the line. Oh, and he goes Just ahead. Just lovely. That was really nice to see. 0.53. Yeah. And being that 0 0.7 down on the second split then as well, he's obviously had a really good bottom section. Yeah, I mean, he just kept his composure, didn't yeah. he? Kept his calm and his exactly. turns were very tight. And Joe Clark, good to see, gives him a, a clap a as clap, well. Yeah, yeah it's, it's what he got to do. As soon as you make a mistake, you have to forget it. And he did. It looks like he didn't even care about the little tiny mistakes he made. And um, kept it going to the bottom and it worked for him. This famous park course hosted the World Champs 2006 and 2013. The Europeans were here in 2018 and last autumn, and this man is an exceptional talent. 
24 years of age in Slovakia's Jakub Grigo. Yeah. One of the nicest guys in the circuit. Yeah, He's lovely man. Yeah, always chatty. Say hello to anybody, always smiling. It's always happy on the water too. Double world under 23 champion, fifth in the Rio Olympics K1 category. He was dazzling in the semis. Matija Biazitso is going to have the challenge thrown right down to him by this young 24 year old Slovakian. And this is also his favourite course. Yeah, I think it's a lot of people's favourite courses. It's been around for quite a while and it's always on the circuit, so everyone has a lot of experience on it. Yeah, first nice competition was here in 1982, the Trojan Horse Prize, as it was then named. There's a big Trojan Horse bar just at the back of us as well, a big wooden That's what that is. outfit. A warship. 0.63 though down. Yeah. It's a tiny Run fraction. The back there. Yeah, just a little bit yeah. wide into 13. Mm -hmm. We saw Matthew beforehand, even though the little bits, you just keep it going, keep the head in the right space, and you'll be doing well. So Jakob Grigar has got a little advantage to make up, and he is doing that yeah, now. Really 1600s nice. only. Seven years coached by Tomasz Mrzaz, the Slovak coach. A little bit in the back there and pushing off the wall. For sure wasn't the plan, but he's out now and he's going. Just trying to keep the boat flowing, keep the bow oh, downstream. Caught up a little bit, yeah. No, I think he's okay in terms yeah. of the penalty, but he certainly lost a bit of time yeah, at for that sure. upstream gate. Yeah, that stopper's quite sticky, and if you come in with a little bit of too much, too much your edge of your boat down, it just catches you. Really up and now he's looking towards the, the right end now. Just getting the right angle of the, the boat edge. Yeah, yeah. All these tiny little differences. Yeah, and that looks to have cost Jakob Krieger, because he was making up time, and he finishes 2.29 2 seconds down on yeah. Matija Biazitso, goes into fourth place, but mm -hmm. he's a a hell of a talent for Slovak canoeing, yeah, which is one of the strongest nations in, in the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and same as a lot of the people on the start line today, their main focus is going to be Tokyo in a few months, so I'm sure he's obviously unhappy with not putting his best performance down, but it's not the main goal for this year. The battle now intensifies because Giovanni De Gennaro, the next to come, world number seven, the 28 year old, he was a European silver medal winner behind Vit Prindis, who will still come next in Ivrea in the north of Italy just five weeks ago on the beautiful Dora Baltea River. This could go. be fascinating. Yeah, it's going to be good to watch for sure. Really good paddler. Always very good to watch. World Championship team goal here in Prague in 2013. Beautiful That's breakout through three. Mm -hmm. This is silky smooth. Keeping the speed running the whole time. It's looking really nice. Hails from the north of Italy, from a Roncadella near Brescia, midpoint between Milan and Lake Garda. That's the stuff. Yeah. Nice little turn, kept the boat flat, really looking good. Open Matthew now as well. He's got 0.14 to spare nearly. Yeah, a tiny advantage for Giovanni Di Gennaro to defend into the second half of this World Cup. Well, like final course. Yeah, a bit of a bump on the wave there, but he landed well and ran into the up really nicely there. Trains with Pier Paolo Ferrazzi. And now the wrong side of the line just dropped. Mm -hmm, yeah. 700s now down. Really minimal thing, but could end up costing them a lot. Well, this is going to be so tight into this uber demanding final Pushing section. Nice. Here we go. This is all lovely. That In and out. Beautiful. Now, Bit this has got work. to be really tight here. Mm -hmm. Mattia Biazitso head to head with Giovanni Di Gennaro. The French Italian battle is going to the wire. Yeah, we feel he's pulling hard. It's going to be ahead, isn't he? He yeah. must be. Yes. Unreal. Nice one. That was deadly. That was really cool to see. Oh. <laughs> it's very exciting when the times are above and below on the splits, and then you come to the finish line ahead. It looks really, it's really interesting to watch. <laughs>
the lead was flipping to yeah. and from, but it goes the Italian way. Giovanni De Gennaro leads with just two to come. Denies Matteo Biazzizzo the World Cup win, and we know now it's either Italy or the Czech, yeah. the home nation that will win this Prague yeah. kayak final. He's going to be World really Cup good fixtures. to watch. Yeah, really excited next to Steve Bitt and Yiri. They're going to be throwing down loads of moves. It's going to be terrific. <laughs> The battle is now on. Two more to come, both for the Czech Republic. Vic Prindish is a world number six. This is his home city and a triple European champion from Evraya five weeks ago. Yeah, he's an amazing paddler, super strong paddler. Always commits 100%. Lovely, that's what I'd say. I'm sure he's done that up a million times and it's like nothing to him, but it always looks good. He was the outright World Cup champion in 2017. And it's a very polished start from Vic Prindis as he's chopping and changing through this yeah. insane water. Yeah, it's looking really good. I can't even begin to think how many times he's probably done this sequence himself in training, living here for so long, but uh, he looks really good in the water, yeah. Second nature, to, second nature to him, nearly. Yeah, but he's got a fine 0.86 yeah. of a second in the second half, which won't be easy, as we've seen today so far. Making up time is really hard. Goes. A little bit in the exit there, maybe, but it's looking good. A little bit of a sprint section here to go now. Ah, what a shame, because he's catching up time, but 16 yeah. is a late penalty. It's pending now. Hopefully that is removed because this could be very close on the clock there. here. Yeah. Ah. So Vic Prindis, he started at seven at the University Sport Club here in Prague. His dad was a canoeist in the Barcelona Olympics in 92. We've got two decisions pending now. He's going to the finish. You can hear the checks outside now as well. But he's sadly outside the time in yeah. any case. Those decisions pending are academic. Yeah. Yeah, unfortunately. Ah. Taps his head as if to say that wasn't my best run. It's point. It's 3.77 seconds down on Giovanni De Gennaro's yeah. time. Yeah, it's unfortunate to see. Yeah, on home waters, yeah. we have to wait as well for our two review decisions. I, just, I think that was with his left leg there and he was sweeping. And it's so hard when the water's chopping underneath you, isn't yeah. it? To keep the kayak below the gate, to get your yeah. blade below the gate. Oh, there's so, so much, many so much to think about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All these bits coming off, you've got your blade on one side, the blade on the other. Your big helmet, you need to make sure your head actually is not the thing fitting through, it's your helmet fitting through. It's really difficult. <laughs> and these are our judges who are making the Hot seat decision yeah. to see the fate of Vic Prindis, second last of the World Cup here in Prague. And yeah, confirmed. penalty confirmed. Yeah. One or two we'll see in a moment. It's going to be one. Yeah. Two it's seconds are added. Yeah. Still two seconds here in Prague. Unless you have the blister on your life, it's going to be a, a lot of a difference in your result. The last to come, Yuri Priskovic drops the 2015 world champion is on course to battle Giovanni De Gennaro the Italian who is eyeing up victory lovely opening to start off yeah, he's looking super comfortable on the water he's been paddling here for so long of course nearly like his home well number oh, one super tight there in the downstream but it was good reigning world champion as well in and out. it's got to be close on the clock and he's got to find a bit as down. well. Yeah, De Gennaro was really fast at the top of the but then. 
Yuri Priskovic just avoids a collision with 11. That was really yeah. tight. And that's a very good breakout back to 13. Mm. Just out of the ladies section. Yeah. Powers off the stop. <laughs> Now he's caught it up, 0. 0.67, yeah. and he's clear of 16 as well. Super tight in there, It's a yeah. masterclass from the world number one and world sure. champion. Maneuvers this up, pushing off the wall as well, yeah. Um, oh, that arm's clean. Priskovic is building a real head of steam here to claim the first World Cup Lovely of the season. Time. This is so good, he must be ahead on the time here. Be, yeah, I hope so anyway. He's on to that final sprint now, let's see what happens. His father was a little Andrew Olympian. His mother was also part oh, of the Czech good. team. And Yuri Priskovic comes First, home. First, nice one, almost a half a second. Gee. Yes, he takes the win for the home nation. Super good to see, yeah. 0.45 of a second, Orshin is yeah. the advantage. It's always and good. Yeah, when someone wins on their home course, obviously it's really nice to see. Czech person. <laughs> <laughs> and the men's final, we've got one in already. <laughs> Brilliant. You don't see that every race. <laughs> so, Yuri Priskovic, what a brilliant run. I mean, the way he caught up time, the yeah. turns were so deft and accurate. Yeah, he knew what he was doing from the start. It's not like we're yeah. surprised as world champion of world number one, no. but the yeah. pressure was really on. Yeah, yeah, it was really nice to see. He just knew what he had to do, and he did it. So, and particularly in the sort of the water before Tokyo, that was mm -hmm. a real run to lay down to his rivals and say, yeah. I'm, "I want Olympic gold." Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really cool. Yeah, I'm sure this is going to be a really good help now coming into Tokyo is with a, another race start under your belt. Is always helpful, no matter how many you've had, especially with so little having happened last year. And getting these few races in before the uh, Olympics start in a few months is going to be really good for everyone competing. And an artificial course here at Vlatava and an artificial course, the Kasai course in Tokyo. So we know this man has got the guns yeah. for these man-made courses. Yeah, for well sure. Well done to Yuri Priskovic. Yeah, super good performance today. Well, there is the seat. The water, the boils bubble away. Yeah. And Yuri Priskovic, he wins. We had six men come down without penalty and the home victory ahead of Giovanni De Gennaro, just 0.45 of a second. Superb was Mathieu Biazitso. He is on the podium for France. And the Olympic champion led early. Joe Clark fourth ahead of Mikel Smolin was the very first to come yeah. fifth for the United States of America. Yeah, yeah, it's mad to see. Yeah. Joe Clark had a super run. Everyone just came down and blistered it, yeah. Really nice to see Michal in fifth now as well. I'm sure that's going to make a big difference to his uh, Olympic point selection. Uh, I'm sure he'd be delighted with himself. Yeah, just making finals is good enough. <laughs>
Uh, well, I knew I lost some time on the top, so I needed to find some on the on the bottom half. So I was trying to do my best, and by just a bit, I beat Giovanni, and and uh, he'll have to wait for his win. <laughs> uh, you said you're in preparation uh, for Tokyo Olympics. Uh, will this uh, win give you extra push uh, to prepare for Tokyo? It's uh, definitely nice to know that uh, I'm still fast enough that uh, the preparation is going well and uh, now it, I only need to put down some quality sessions in the next two months to, to prepare and, uh, and be as best, in best possible shape for the, for the Tokyo Games. Thank you very much. Thank you. So that is the end, ladies and gentlemen, of a fascinating kayak men's and ladies final. Please do join us tomorrow for the canoe finals. It's going to be wonderful sport again from Prague, the Czech capital. Roshan Farrell, thank you very much. You're more than welcome. Thanks for having me. It's really exciting. Thank you for your yeah. company, and we will see you tomorrow. See ya. <laughs>